Hello, everyone. Welcome into the Red Earth Production Studios for another edition of YBM Cast with Matt and Brian and our good friend of PBR Missouri, Kevin Mulder. Kevin, how are you doing today? I'm great, guys. How about you? Good, good. Doing well. Doing, doing well. well. We're going to start off our, our, our show today talking about um, the recruiting bubble that I've seen in that 2022 class. And I, man, it just is amazing to me. Uh, we were out at the, the, the event here in, uh, at Lindenwood University with you, and there's still that bubble that's sitting there um, that those 2022s just, they're not committed. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> It's, it's unfortunate, I think, in my opinion, they're the class that has been affected the most uh, from, from COVID. Now, there's been a lot of classes all the way through college one that have also been affected. But in my opinion, the 22s have been most negatively affected through this recruiting process. I'm looking at guys that normally be off the board that are really nice players. But right now, they don't have a home yet. And, uh, you know, there's a, a variety of reasons for that. Division ones had unlimited rosters last year. Everyone was given an extra year of eligibility. Next year, those schools have to be down to 40 players on the roster. So teams are reducing rosters instead of adding to rosters. And there's just not, there's more players than there are spots, basically. Well, you have the transfer portal, mm-hmm. which so now you can transfer without sitting out. So the question on that is: the genie's out of the bottle. Does the genie go back in, or is this the new norm? So I'm curious to see what happens with that. But I think you hit the nail on the coffin though with the 22s because the 22s. There's a lot of kids that are really good ball players, but the question is where do they go? So I think a lot of them are going to go JUCO because of this, but then you still fall in the same problem at JUCO because there you got 80 kids showing up in the fall for a 25, 30 man roster. So it's when does this end? When does what happened at COVID end? And I think what's going to happen is so take JUCO. You have kids at JUCO that played two years and they are literally walking into a four year school eligibility wise as a freshman because their two years didn't count. Right, right. So, but they're walking in as a junior in school for college. So you would have to then get a master's program to continue to play baseball if you want to play again for the four years. So half of those kids at some point are going to say, look, I'm not getting drafted. I'm not going pro. I don't want a master's. I'm done with school. I'm just going to stop. And I think that is kind of where this whole cycle starts to end fall off if it doesn't happen sooner but right it's going to take a couple years i think so i i agree and kevin let's you know when you're 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 the head coach at murray state you know and you're looking at this situation if you were sitting there today what's your approach to this how are you managing this are you really wanting to keep the guys uh, in your program with that extra year of eligibility because you know them rather than taking a chance? How does that work, you know, your experience level there? Where, where do you see that? So there's two things here on play. You kind of have two decisions to make if you're a school. One, you can go into the transfer portal and get a kid that's 21, 22 years old, played three, four years of college baseball and still has a year or two of eligibility left. Or you can go into high school and maybe get a player that you wouldn't have gotten in normal conditions uh, in kind of buying, buying all the stock slow, if you will. Uh, but then you got an 18-year-old kid that you're going to have to wait years on because college baseball is playing at a, at a higher level, that, um, I would say, for the next couple of years just because the average age of the college baseball player is about a year older than it was previously. So it's kind of an interesting dynamic. So I think it depends on the team. So it depends what you have. If So let's say you're a, uh, a Tennessee or a Stanford or somebody who, I mean, you've already got your dudes, right? 
but say somebody falls cool. through the cracks or somebody gets drafted, right? And so they're not gonna they're not gonna report to Tennessee or Stanford. So now you've got money that opens up. If you're already about to compete, I don't think any of those kids that are left in 2022 you probably either want or there's one random one that you're gonna try to swoop in. But if you can pull a 21 or 22 year old kid that can walk in and be good out of your bullpen or could be a good backup catcher for a team that's already going to compete for a college world series. I think they would go that route as opposed to trying to pull a trigger on a 22 that they, I mean, is he going to do anything? Right. I, I think it depends all, on the team. There's always the exception to the rule. Like, uh, you know, if you're talking about the teams that are good enough to go to the college world series, they're going to get that elite talent. Like we saw Christian little, Starting for Vanderbilt last night at 17 years old in the College World Series. So, you know, there, there's 40 or 50 kids in the country that, yeah, the school can make the exception for, yeah, we're going to go get that kid because he's that talented. Uh, but for the vast majority of high school guys, 99.9% of them, it, it's a tough spot still. Yeah, because we're, we were looking at them. We're talking about this before we came on the show. Uh, Kevin, you still have that young man, and we saw him at the um, in the high school playoffs. Carson Milbrandt still sitting there, you know, number three in the state of Missouri, uncommitted, and we know the kid's talented, right? Right. Now that was a little bit different situation. He was committed to Mizzou, okay, and uh, they had a coaching change. Um, it, with their pitching coach, and he decided to make a uh, uh, to reopen up his recruiting process. And he's still, I, I don't know what's going on exactly. He could still go back to Mizzou, I suppose, or he's opened it up. And uh, obviously, what we saw over at the state tournament, he'll have uh, no shortage of opportunities to, of schools to pick from. That, that would be a great example of an exception. You know, he's 6 2. He's legitimately low 90s, up to 94 at fighter. Obviously, he throws strikes and competes and is effective. A guy like that's always going to have an opportunity. Uh, someone, someone's going to have a home for that guy. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a situation which we discussed off camera where you get a school that has a 22 that's verbally committed, and maybe he's had a not so great spring right maybe he's having a not so great summer they will cut that kid and add this carson kid they'll say look we're gonna pull and they offer money to this kid it happens yeah and i think this is you know it's such an interesting conversation because you have all these kids sitting there you've got the you have a we we've talked about the 2023 class being very strong right a lot of really good talent uh, 2024 behind it, let's talk about that. So if you're talking about a really strong 2023 class, tw is 2024 a pretty good class? Um, and how does that, and, and again, that starts figuring. So I think that bubble does, it pushes it a little bit, and you might just have some of these kids that might just get left out uh, hanging to dry. I, I'm not going to say it like that. That's probably a bad way to put it. But they just don't have – they're going to have to do some different things to get themselves the opportunity. We'll put it that way, I think. Yeah. Right? I mean, I think uh, – so when you talk about the oh, – got to put my glasses on. Sorry, guys. There we go. Then now I can see. <laughs> and, and right off the bat, uh, two things stuck out to me when I was looking at this. Um, in the 2024 class, you've got um, uh, this young man, Bo Jonas. You got the top two in the state at Liberty North, which we were talking about at the end of the high school season, and you brought up Liberty North, and it's probably because you're seeing these kids here this way. Uh, Bo Jonas verbally committed to Oklahoma. And then you have two 20, uh, 25s that we've talked to here in Gavin Richards and Riker Benz, both verbally committed to Oklahoma. I mean, there's three kids out of the state of Missouri, and if you just look at recruiting, I, I was telling Matt this earlier, I mean, Mizzou, they couldn't compete against Oklahoma when they were in the Big 12, and they still can't compete against Oklahoma when they're in the SEC. 
Um, yeah, you know, Oklahoma is going to do a good job. And the good thing, it's good for the players. Now, um, there are a lot of high-end schools, uh, SEC, Big 12, that come in and recruit the state of Missouri. So our, our players do have options. Um, you know, I'm under the belief it, it, it's best when our state school is is doing things and kids want to go there. I, I do think there is value uh, for players in our state um, to to choose the local school because there is uh, you know there is that extra um, you know whether it's intentional or not. Uh, it, it is always nice uh, to see the local guys go to the uh, the in-state school, and I feel like they often get the benefit of the doubt. Where if you go to some state school or gram far away, if it's close, oftentimes the local the, lo the local guy will edge out the the guy that's from eight hours away. It, it's just part part of what happens. <laughs> so um, you know, it, it, but it is interesting, and there are some really great programs, and certainly there there's exceptions. The rule and you see uh, guys from uh, from the area leave and do great things and you know I, I talked about Christian Little uh, going to Vanderbilt and making right. a start uh, on national television last night in the College World Series that was pretty cool to see uh, and, and certainly there's guys that have gone on to do great things at other places so, but interesting to watch and, and see who what schools come into the state and which kids leave and um, it, you know, it, it's interesting to follow for sure. I think Mizzou still holds a, uh, a prestige level in the state of Missouri for kids. Now, does it hold that for the top five kids in the state per each class? Probably to some degree, but the difference, I mean, is I mean, Mizzou didn't have that great of a season. And they're also in the SEC, which is one right. of the hardest conferences in the country, if not the hardest conference in the country. Because I think a few years ago, Missouri State, when they were doing their run, I think they were kind of the place that people were going or wanting to go. Agreed. But with Mizzou and the SEC, I think it kind of brings it back to them. Um, but, again, it, it, there's a lot you know of what? schools like, coming in here. It, absolutely, and part of it is on Mizzou. They have to do a better job, and you know, if people are going to people remember, Max Scherzer went to Mizzou. They've, they've had a run of first rounders. They've had plenty of guys uh, that have gone on to do great thing in the big leagues. You can be highly successful at University of Missouri in baseball. Um, you know, so but people want to go play for winners and. They'll go where the hot hand is. And, and Matt brought it up. Missouri State's had their runs. They've been to Super Regionals. They've been to a yeah. college world series. And when that happened, the best players in the state went there. And when Mizzou was hot and they had a, a great run, um, they, they got a lot of the best players. So it goes in cycles. Then, you know, they hit, Missouri had a tough year this year, and hopefully they can rebound and uh, – you know, there are some great players in our state, and it'd be nice to see them stay in the state so we can continue to follow, uh, you know, right down the road. Well, I think also upgrading facilities for Mizzou is That's a right. huge yeah. part. Yes. Because when you're competing with the SEC, I don't know if you personally, Kevin, have been to Mississippi State or an Ole Miss baseball mm -hmm. game or a Vandy yeah. or a Tennessee baseball game. Ole Miss is crazy, dude. So Mississippi State's dude. crazy, too. But it has a football-like yeah. atmosphere at a baseball game. Mizzou doesn't have that. Well, for one, they don't have the fan base because they haven't built that up like those mm -hmm. southern schools have. Mm -hmm. But it's also the facility and the different yeah. things that they've done to their facilities to attract kids. If I was a kid and I'm 16 and I go to Mississippi State or Ole Miss to watch a baseball game and they're tailgating and barbecuing out in the outfield and it's a party. Right. And it's that crazy makes a big difference. In the stands. And then you go to a Mizzou game on a Tuesday yeah. night 
and it's, you know, 45, 50 degrees and there's nobody there watching, it, it makes a difference to a 16 year old kid. And, and it, it's a, an interesting comparison, though, is Missouri softball kind of has it rolling right now. I, I've seen <laughs> yeah. Twitter pictures and videos of their stadium sold out and, yeah. and they're uh, hosting regionals and they got kind of the scene that Matt's talking about uh, in a great atmosphere in college softball there. So uh, not quite apples to apples, but it's close. You know, both spring sports and, uh, you know, I would say Missouri softball certainly has things rolling right now. And, and two, Mizzou's traditions have always been more in football and basketball, right? Um, you know, and you go, I've been to some Mizzou football games. I've never personally been to a Mizzou baseball game. Well, look at Tennessee. Tennessee was football. Peyton yeah. Manning. But now Tennessee, the base. And I think it's a matter with the upgrade, as you were talking about, I think that has an important impact on on the player. Do you have the facilities to, to uh, get better as a player? Um, is that an impact? I think it but is. Kevin knows this, though. College sports, it's, it's about recruiting. Yeah. It's about recruiting. Who can you get? And then, yeah. obviously, you got to coach them up. But, I mean, you can only win games if you have good players. I don't care how good of a coach you are. If, I mean, if you don't have any players, it doesn't well, matter. And let's talk about Mizzou does have this verbal commit. Uh, 2024 kid out of Lee Summit uh, West, Drew Dick, uh, Dickerson. Yes. And, Drew, you know. Drew's a special talent. He's, he's really good. Uh Physical kid started as a freshman at least some at West, who's a really nice program at shortstop, and he's a physical kid can hit. Uh, this is a great get from the zoo um, for sure. And you know if they can if they can hang on to some of that, and you've got some of these kids here, you know, uh, Devin Wassman, Ashton Williams, Kennett. You know, I mean. Now that Southern, you know, because we saw Reese Robinette go to Arkansas, right, <clears throat> out of Kennett. Can Mizzou get down there into that into that area in Kennett and some of that Southern uh, Missouri and be able to recruit and bring that kid up up to the state, uh, you know, up north? <laughs> I, I believe they can. Uh, Coach Beezer's from that area, um, so he uh, he's well connected down there. Um, so yeah, I. I in my opinion, the whole state's in play for them. And, uh, you know, there are plenty of talent there in the 24. And now I'm starting to learn about the 25 class. There is a lot of talent in any school that could come in and, and get some of these guys going to set their roster up for success in the future. I agree with Kevin. But until Mizzou has a good season – I don't think they can compete with Arkansas. That's going to be tough. And that's, you're right. That's who they're competing for in, when you come down south there, right? They're competing against Arkansas. But Arkansas also pulls from Texas. But you have, I mean, Arkansas can pull from yeah. anywhere right now. I mean, they're pulling from California. So they're with, pulling when from you're Missouri. number one all year, yeah. you're pulling from across the country. So, uh, and to, to finish off here, Kevin, with this 2024 group, um, Matt and I were looking at this, and this is all pretty much west side of the state. It's it's interesting how it goes and runs um, <laughs> because you can go to different classes um, and see a more heavily eastern side. Of it. And, um, you know, the one thing about the 24 class and the 25 class, we're still getting to know them. So there will be players pop up, and there's some kids – and I had an event yesterday with the 25s and 26s. There's no guarantee when you're a freshman that you're going to, if you're the best player, it doesn't mean you're going to be the best player by the time high school's over with. And there's that, there's, it happens, it's a guarantee that it's going to happen. There'll be some kid that grows a couple inches, fastball will come on, there, there will be a late bloomer with the pitching stuff in particular. Um, and there will be guys at the top of the list that are kind of done physically and, and we'll slide down as we go. So there will be lots of changes in this as we go. I love that perspective of it because I think that's the tough thing when you're talking about these 
you know, and, and 24, it's right there at the, I think the breakout because these are kids are 15 to 16 sophomores going into that. But when you start breaking that down, I mean, you see that kid show up that's five foot, you know, three, right? Uh, 125 soaking wet. And all of a sudden he grows, you know, seven inches and you're like, is that the same kid? Right? Right. It's a hard age. Thir- I mean, 13 U is yeah. really a hard age because you get the kids that have already grown. 14 U is kind of the bubble of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see the you you see the picture of the kids and it goes like this, right? <laughs> well, it's, it, I mean, we were talking about this the picture for uh, Francis Howell, yeah, who was a late bloomer, um, or not Howell, uh, uh, Zumont West, that was a late bloomer, uh, that kind of came on within the last year, and Tanner Perry and had a really good season. Yeah, yeah. So it so, happens late, and it may happen early. So that's why I tell those kids that are big at 13U, if you're six foot now, you still got to learn how to play because you might be a leadoff hitter by the time you're 17, 18 years old. Is there anybody in that right here with that 2024 class? I know we talked about the couple kids we see that are already committed and a couple other names. Who, who stands out for you here, Kevin, on that, in that 2024 class right now? Man, there, there's a lot of guys. Um, <laughs> Trey Snyder, obviously, that's a, a top 20 nationally ranked player uh, out of Liberty North. That's their number one. Um, I love Lucas Wilson, who's a short uh, coach's son, head coach's son from State High School. He's a, kind of a hard-nosed player. Um, locally, um, there are some really good ones. Carter Cox over at Zoom All South is going to be a really good left-handed pitcher. Uh, and also can swing the Mason Benno at Parkway uh, West. Had a huge season for West on the mound as a freshman, but he's also a shortstop. This is that's going to be a great one to watch over the next couple of years. Um, and then Jackson Carter over at Zoom Alt East. He's one of the fastest players in the state at all ages right now. He, he, I've had him sub six five. Um, so he's going to be fun to watch develop. That's real speed. That's pro type speed. And uh, if he can figure out the uh, the hitting part of it, and he he hit all, he hit well in high school, uh, but if he continues to develop his swing offensively, he keeps running a six four six three. He's going to get some attention from the pro scouts. There you go. Yeah. We were talking about him off camera before can't teach, that. Can't teach speed. No, no, and and no. that's it. <laughs> and he's fast. And we saw him. I saw him in three games, and he ran down some balls in the outfield. I mean, yeah. he ran him down. And I don't think he would played. I, I'm not quite sure. I don't know what he, what he did early on, but uh, I was talking with his dad, and I don't think he'd played much outfield. He was he was playing in center field, and I don't think he'd played center field before. So it was a growing process and working and and i think it you know it's one of those things right got to get better absolutely so guys what what would you say we got uh you know last word here on this 2022 recruiting bubble here we got what's advice what do you got i mean you guys are out there working with these kids and what well, what do you well, say I mean, the to next two, i think the next three or four weeks are going to be very vital for most of them because mostly you have i mean you're you're talking about big events down south you've got a big pg event then you got the wwba and then you got the pbr national championships the 16 u pbr national championships going on right now for the 23 class and the word is that that is loaded right now at lake point with with college coaches um i think after the pbr 17 u national championship a lot of these kids are going to be gone off the board on a national level. And I think some of the local kids are going to know where they sit, what division they're sitting at, and where they're going to go in general. So I think some of them are still holding out for that. Kind that of like D1 that school. Through, yeah. But some, I mean, some of them don't have any money. Some of them are full. They're like, I don't, you know, they need one spot, and it's maybe a center fielder or maybe it's a shortstop. So I don't know. What do you think, Kevin? Yeah, I think this is going to be a big couple of weeks for the 22 class. You got to remember, college coaches haven't seen these kids play in over a year and a half uh, in yeah. person. So um, 
this is going to be a big, you know, every summer is important for these guys, but I would say it's, it's under the microscope big time. Uh, this first couple of weeks of summer for these kids is going to be huge. These guys just got on the road June 8th, the division one coaches. Uh, so we're, they're scrambling around trying to see all of these guys. So there's definitely going to be some movement over the next, you know, three to five weeks. Well, that, but they're not only seeing the new kids, but a, like he just said, a lot of them have to go see their kids that they have coming in from the 22 class that they haven't seen in person. That could I talked awesome. to a couple of coaches yeah. and they're, they said, hey, I got to see some of these kids that are coming in because I've never seen them in person. <laughs> but It's so crazy, man. It really is. It's so interesting. And that was what, what struck me about this when I'm looking at the 22. I'm like... My goodness, I see all these schools, you know, and here you got a couple of kids in 2024 already going, and it's just like, where's the 2022s going? And I think it's just a difficult process. So, guys, thanks a lot for the the information. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin, you're de- you, you said you're in Creekside uh, working out there? I am in Creekside, yeah. The game's away just from started home. back off. Yeah. So what I'm going to th- run uh, so I can make my game. All right, bud. Um, hey, guys. I'll see you guys. All right, Kevin. Thanks, man. Wow. A lot of good stuff there, man. Yep. I mean, this is crazy. This is what we've been talking about for some time um, with these things. And uh, you know what, Matt? Um, parents, players, do the best you can over the next couple of weeks. Be be seen. Get you know. Hope, hopefully, these kids are getting into these tournaments, and getting being able to to you know get those opportunities. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's I mean, it's summer ball, right? Right. Twenty twos. This is the time to show. And I think for a lot of them, it has to. They have to be realistic about where their kid is going to go. Have that conversation, right? be real i think thank you very much for that i appreciate that because i agree don't don't try and overshoot something you can grow into something if it's junior college if you still really want to play at a higher level that not well here's the thing if you're 22 and you are not on the radar for d1s and you're going down south to play you have to really really show well and because they're going to watch and say oh i like this kid i gotta watch him again you have a bad game, mm. okay, I'll move on. I mean, it literally, it's pressure, but it's the truth. If, if there, you got 22s and there's D1s not on you yet, you have to really shine. There's always going to be pressure in those situations. Right? Now, if you already have guys on you, then, yeah, I mean. I mean, because when you get to school, you're competing, and that pressure is still there, right? Right, but you have, I mean, 22s, they, they, if you don't have D1s on you now, you probably and most likely will not go D1. Unless you literally have a, a week where you just you shove it on the mound or you're crushing it at the plate. Be realistic. There yep. you go, folks. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us today. We do appreciate it. Remember, if you like what we're doing here, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that dinger because that's what we do around here. We hit dingers. I love the long ball. Chicks dig the long ball, and that's the way we work. Um, guys, uh, thanks again. Thanks to Kevin Mulder. Always a pleasure, Matt. Appreciate it. You guys are headed down to uh, dun, 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 Hoover, Hoover, Alabama. Alabama. Yep. Right. Got a big one coming up. Same thought. And, and this is how you're dealing with it, too, right? In the next four weeks yeah. are all down south, all PG Elite, WWBA, and uh, TBR. It's Good luck to you, man. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun and it's long. <laughs> so, everybody, have a great day in the Lord. And uh, all you pitchers, keep throwing strikes. And you hitters, hit them where they ain't. That's what you were hoping your guys are doing. And we'll see you next time.